Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joseph. For today's video, we're going to be looking at Photoshop. Photoshop itself is a complex software if you're launching it for the very first time. And that is because there are so many tools inside Photoshop and there are so many ways of using those tools to get similar results inside Photoshop. So for example, if you want to color grade, you can use the curves, I can use the color balance, I can I can even use a hue saturation. You know, there are so many ways of doing things inside Photoshop and it can be daunting. And uh, I'm hoping that at the end of this video, Video, you will get to understand the tools the interface and how Photoshop works and you can practice even more and figure things out for yourself even more all right so I've launched Photoshop and this is what I'm being greeted with and there's a high chance that when you launch Photoshop this is what you're going to see but before I do that I also want to go on and click on home and over here if I have any recent files this is where you're going to be but what I also want to show you is the fact that you can create your own document and work directly off that and then they have some presets in here so if for example, if I want to create a document for photo, same for mobile, same for film, same for art and illustration, they already have some presets that you can simply click on and start working from there. But the interesting thing is you also have the flexibility to create your own document. So for example, I want to create something called um, flow color print maybe this is what i want to create right i can choose the unit that i want this document to be in whether pixels inches centimeters millimeters i can do that here and i can also just choose the dimensions that i want so let me actually change it to inches and let's just say i want to create um like an 8 by 10 right so click on 8 and type in 10 and i can choose the resolution of the document if i want it to be 300 or more or less i can do that here if i want it to be pixels per inch or centimeter i can choose that here um i can also choose a color mode that is if i want it to be in grayscale and work on a black and white image or if i want it to be cmyk for print i can also choose the bit depth of the document if i want it to be 16 and normally i don't work or mess with these over here i just keep it at is i'm not going to be crazy a document from scratch i'm rather going to be importing one of the images that i showed you so i'm going to click on close but if you rather choose to create your own document then you're going to hit on create and it's going to open that inside photoshop i'm going to close it and i'm going to click on this image right here and that is going to be launched inside photoshop but we didn't go straight into photoshop because this is a raw file typically raw files don't open directly inside photoshop they're going to open in a raw processing software and photoshop has a built-in raw processing software which is camera raw you can launch it through bridge and you can launch it directly through photoshop and that is a way of accessing your um, raw files and processing them and preparing them for you know working on inside photoshop so i'm just gonna hit on open and now this should open inside photoshop there's a high chance that when you get to this stage you're going to have this tool on the left hand side like this but i decided to move it to the right and the reason is i noticed that when i'm working i move all the way to the left to pick a tool come all the way to the right pick an adjustment and come back onto my image and that back and forth was just wasting my time and you know sometimes when you're retouching you spend a long number of hours editing and you know moving back and forth can even further make you spend more time you know retouching so moving this all the way to the right hand side was just a simple thing to do i did it just once and anytime i launch photoshop this is the preset or the interface that i get so if it's something that you want to do i recommend playing with it and figuring out if this is what you want to do other than that the interface is basically the same all right the first one i want to talk about is going to be your move tool and the move tool is what you're using to move any pixels that are on layers around inside photoshop this is a raw file that i imported and it's my background image so when i click and decide to move let's see what happens photoshop is telling me that i need to convert this into a normal layer before it's going to allow me to move this document around so let's just hit on convert to normal layer and you can see that the padlock immediately goes away and now it's apply the move that i made so initially this is where the image was i can decide to move it up move it down move it to the left move it to the right the move tool allows you to move pixels around i just did undo by hitting ctrl command z and that will just take me to a step before now before i move on again i just want to quickly just talk about these layers right here all the time people are saying that when you're working inside photoshop work non-destructively and what does that mean right let's just say i want to paint with a blue you know color over her face 
I can do that and I've done that directly on the image so it's applied it onto this background layer now let's just say I want to clean this part and it just let her face show through right I'm gonna hit E for my eraser make it a little bit bigger and when I start erasing you can see that it's rather not revealing her face that means I've basically covered the pixels with the blue stroke that I made but if I rather created a new layer and the way you do that is by clicking on this box with a plus icon in there and it's going to create a new layer now if I go back again and paint with this blue over her face you see that I've covered her face all right but if I want to now erase this blue over her face I can just press on E again to bring my eraser and when I start erasing you can see that we are revealing her face so this is something that you can always do just create layers inside Photoshop and then just assign them to do specific things and when you're sure you're not going to you know make any further adjustments you can decide to merge it down but always 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 just work on independent layers another thing you can do inside Photoshop is also rename your layers just so if you're creating several layers you know what each layer is doing so I can decide to name this blue stroke so that I know that this is where my blue stroke is so now if I want to move this around again I click on my move tool and now I'm allowed to move this blue stroke around also in case I want to color grade this image right I can decide to use maybe curves I can use color balance and hue saturation and let's just imagine that I have color graded this image already right now because all of these individual layers are doing one thing which is color grading I can decide to put all of them in a group right so I'm gonna hit on shift and click on the last one hit command or control G and that is going to put it inside a group and I can decide to name this color grade again so that I'm staying organized and I know that everything inside this group contains my color grading so this is how um, this panel works and these are the things that you can do with them all right another thing that I also want you to know is that layers also interact with each other through blend modes opacity and fill so if I create a new layer for example and I call this let's say red stroke right now I'm gonna choose a red color just like that press ok and I'm just gonna paint a little bit over her dress you can see that this is just a simple red brush stroke right but if I wanted to blend into the outfit that she's wearing I can actually decide to maybe reduce opacity a little bit so that the layer underneath shows through or I can actually just go and choose a color blend mode that is just going to you know allow this layer to interact with the layer underneath properly so this is normal you can see you don't see the folds in the dress it's not really blending in as much but when i shift it to color you can see that it's blending in and now i can choose to reduce opacity just so it blends in a little bit more so these are some of the things that you can do inside your layers panel and you know i renamed them so i'm sure of what each layer is doing so we'll come back here again let me just delete this and now we can delve into photoshop itself we've already spoken about the move tool the next thing i want to talk about is going to be your selection tool right so inside the selections tool you have your rectangular elliptical and like the name says you can create rectangular selection with this tool but if you hit on shift it's going to conform the shape into a perfect square the same thing with your um, elliptical marquee tool that also allows you to create oval or circular shapes and the way you create a perfect circular shape is by simply hitting on the shift tool and then it's just going to conform this into a perfect circle just like that now you can make circular selections easily i'm going to delete this the next one i'm going to talk about is going to be your um, lasso tools the lasso tool just allows you to freehand and make a selection so for me for example i'm using a wacom tablet i can simply just move this tool around and then just you know make a selection of the torso of my subject it's not perfect it has its uses but I've been able to quickly do that again if I hit command J and go back to the move tool I can now move her torso around so this is what you can do with your lasso selection tool as well the next tool is going to be your quick selection tool and you can use that to select subjects or things that are a little bit more in focus and it's a little bit of an intelligent selection tool so if I want to select my subject for example I can simply just start clicking you can see that it is you know defining where 
my subject is and intelligently is being able to select my subject it's not perfect but it's way better and faster and if i want to make a duplicate or if i want to fill it with let's say red i can just create a new layer and hit fill this with red and you can see that it has covered where my subject is but then again it's a quicker way of selecting your subject and that is by clicking on select subject it's a new engine that they added and it also does a very good job of selecting your subject and again if you want to refine your selections you can just click on the Q button and this is going to make a mask available to you to see where it's selected and where it's not so for example if I zoom in over here you can see that it didn't really define her fingers properly and I can now use my brush to to refine this selection right so if I just paint with white now I've been able to include her fingers into the selection if i'm not too happy with anything and i want to erase that part out of the selection i can easily do that as well so if i want to let's say get rid of that i can just paint with black and paint this out of the selection right now if i press on q again you can see that we've been able to include this into the selection so this is how the quick selection works especially with your subject selection um, engine and it does a very decent job all right so the next tool i want to talk about is going to be the crop tool and when i click on the crop for example now it's brought this bounding box that i can manually move around you know to define the crop so maybe i want to turn this into a portrait i can just drag these ends in and now i have more square-ish or portrait orientation of the crop if i want to reset it i can simply click on that and it's just going to go back to the default and also they have some presets in here so for example if i want to create like a four by five i can simply click on that and we'll adjust it to a four by five crop ratio if i want to make a 16 by nine again it will quickly just apply that ratio and now when i click and drag it's just going to be applying that ratio by scaling it accordingly and that is what you can do with the crop tool i'm going to undo that also with the crop tool you can see that when i move the mouse out of the box and towards the corner right here it automatically turns into a curved arrow and what this means is that i can rotate my crop just a little bit so if i want to rotate the image like that i can easily do that or in this case if i want to make the horizon a little bit straight i can simply do that like so hit the check mark and it's going to apply this crop onto the image you can see that some areas need filling and because i have my content aware selected it will do a decent job of filling those edges beautifully another thing i want to show you is um, if i click on delete crop pixels right and let me just go to let's say four by five and i hit on enter as you see now i want to go back to the landscape right when i click again and i want to clear the ratio and now i'm dragging this out towards the sides you can see that we don't have that information there anymore and that is because we had clicked on delete cropped pixels uncheck the content aware and you know just move this out like that move this out and hit the check mark you can see that now we don't have any pixels at all and that is because the information that was there has been deleted so i'm just going to undo several times and i'm going to go back to the crop i'm going to uncheck delete crop pixels i'm going to go back and let's just say let's just try and eyeball this and make this a portrait right something like that hit enter now let's say i want to change my mind and go back to landscape i can just click on that you can see that it shows a preview that those pixels are still there and so i can simply just click and drag it out hit the check mark and now i've gone back to my landscape orientation so with the brush tool i typically use it you know for painting and stuff like that let me create a new layer and just like i did a little demo i'm gonna paint and maybe i just want to blend in the sky and the sea i'm gonna reduce the flow so that i'm not pouring a lot of ink i can also just reduce the opacity so that the build up is a little bit slow and when i just sample by pressing alt it turns into an eyedropper i can sample and now i can simply just start painting let me increase the opacity i can start painting gradually until you can't tell you know where the starting point of the sea is and where the starting point of the sky is i've basically just blended them together and i use the brush tool for that 
So these are some of the things that you can use a brush tool for. Um, also, if you want to make very defined brush strokes, you can easily do that. Let me sample this darker blue color. And you can see that now we've been able to make more defined brush strokes. All right. So that's how the brush tool works. All right. The next thing I want to talk about is going to be your healing tools. And we have several of them inside Photoshop, right? So first thing is going to be your spot healing. And with a spot healing, what you do is just paint over the blemish that you want to get rid of. And Photoshop is going to get rid of that. You don't need to do anything else, especially if you have sample all layers checked. This is very important. So let's just say I have it unchecked, right? And I, again, we want to work non-destructively. So what we're going to do is create a new empty layer. We're going to call this healing. And now when I decide to paint with the same spots healing tool, you can see that nothing happened because we're working on a blank healing layer. There is no information on it. So it doesn't know where to sample from or there's simply nothing for it to sample from. But when I click on sample all layers and paint over that, you can see that we've been able to get rid of that blemish. And when I do it before and after by hiding the layer, you can see that the blemish is there, but it's just gotten rid of it. You can see that I didn't do a very good job because we are losing some of the texture. So this is the little things that you have to note when you're using some of these tools i'll show you other tools that would rather retain texture and stuff like that so let me just delete that the next one i want to talk about is going to be the regular healing brush tool again i have all these options checked so you can experiment with them aligned and use legacy i also have current and below selected and that is important so that again when i simply hit on all to sample this good area and paint over the blemish you can see that we retain the texture and it's blended that area a lot better when i do it before and after you can see that it's just a blemish that is gone but we're retaining the color and the texture accuracy over there so again you can just move around and then do all of your healing by using the healing brush to sampling clean areas and then just painting over your blemishes i have a dedicated video on blemish removal but the link is somewhere here and then you can check it out all right the next one i also use a lot is going to be the patch tool and for the patch tool again you also have to work directly on a layer so instead of working directly on this background layer maybe we want to make a copy of that right you can make copies of layers by hitting command j which is going to make a duplicate of it or you can simply just click this layer down onto your new layer icon and it will make a copy of that layer right i'm also going to make sure that i have my patch tool selected and i'm just going to draw over the area i want to heal and drag it out and you can see that we've been able to heal that so draw around drag it out draw around drag it out and it's also good for longer lines like these so I'll just draw around a smile line move it out and you can see that we've been able to simply or quickly remove these little blemishes so again explore with these tools and figure out how they work and you will be able to retouch quickly and a lot faster now for clone stamp tool it's a bit different we can use that also for healing or removing blemishes but what it does is it makes direct copies of whatever you're selecting so it doesn't take into account color texture and it doesn't attempt to blend them what it does is it's just making a direct copy of what you want right so let me go back to the healing brush and then do a demo for you to see so with a healing brush right if I let's say I want to sample her eye over here and then I'm painting that you can see that as I'm painting is making a direct copy of her eyes but when I let go it's just going to try and blend the colors to the background and so the eye is not looking as realistic as it is it, it looks the same but it's retaining the texture and everything it's just a color that is trying to blend so it matches with the background right but if i use the clone stamp tool and sample the eye and now i paint again i'm supposed to make sure that my flow is high so that it's more intense you can see that i've painted the same eye and when i let go we've made a direct copy of the eye so this is how the clone stamp tool works it allows you to make direct copies all over your layers right i'm gonna delete that because we don't need it anymore the next one i'm going to talk about is going to be your gradient tool and with the gradient tool it allows you to add gradients to your images and they have some presets in there that we can look at so click on gradient tool and over here you can choose whether you know let's just go through some of the basics or actually let's go through 
pastels so let's just pick a color like this press ok and there are several ways of applying these gradients you can choose to use a linear gradient you can choose to use a radial gradient and then there are other options uh, diamond gradients and stuff like that so let's just play with the linear one for example when I draw a line out it will just give me a gradation of the colors that I selected so doing that you can see it's giving me that same uh, gradient that I selected in a linear form let me create a new layer and go back to the gradient and choose you can choose your own color so over here let's just say I want to choose a warm tone a little warmer and I'm just gonna go over here and go with like a cool color something like so press ok press ok and now when i drag this out you can see that we have a warm highlight and it's going to gradually turn into a cool tone in the shadow so what i'm going to do is just simply change this to soft light actually and now when i reduce opacity you can see that we have a little glow over here and everywhere else goes into a cool tone so before after before after so this is what you can use your gradients tool for again explore with it figure out how it works now when it comes to selections as i defined earlier we had the quick selection tool and we were able to select our subject now if there are any parts that you want to select you can also use the pen tool the pen tool is one of the original selection tools that was included inside photoshop and it's a very powerful tool even though it's painstaking is very very powerful right I guess I want to make a selection of address I'll just make a point right here and click over here and then just bend it a little bit you can get very intricate selections using the pen tool so I will advise that you master it or in case you don't know how to use the pen tool let me know in the comments down below and I will be sure to make a dedicated tutorial on the pen tool so imagine we are done with the selection you can just come back to your starting point click on that and it's just going to complete it and the way you turn pen tools into selections is by right clicking and then make selection so that is going to turn this into a selection um, again explore with the tool and you'll find how you know you can use it in a myriad of situations the next thing is going to be your text tool so if you want to add let's say you're done retouching this image you just want to quickly sign your name on there click on the text tool um, click over there and then maybe just type flow you can also choose any color that you want um, let's just go with a blue color over here hit the check mark we can also just resize the text a little bit and then put it at the bottom hit a check mark and we've been able to quickly add text so if anyone sees this image they know that this image was shot by flow what i also want to do is probably you know, let's just say we want to make this let's combine some of the things that we've done so far so i just want to increase this, this text make it a little bit bigger maybe something like that and I want this text to go behind my subject so it means I need to select my subject right so what I'm gonna do is just click on the layer 0 which is my background layer I'm gonna hit on my quick selection tool and I'm gonna quickly click on select subject and that is just going to quickly make a selection of my subject now what I want to do is just get rid of um, the text that is covering my subject space right so I'm gonna go back onto the text and we're going to add a layer mask now adding this layer mask puts black on the background and um, you know fills the foreground on my subject with white and the way layer masks work is anything that is black is hitting anything that is white reveals if I just make this a little bigger you see that this this is the layer mask that I have so wherever is white is going to reveal what's on that layer whatever is black is going to hide it what I want to do is invert it so that we have our background white and our subject black this will ensure that the text goes behind our subject so when I option click this is what we have we've been able to quickly put the text behind our subject again with the layer mask selected if i hit command i and i invert it this is what we have before you can see the background is black my subject is white when i hit command i the background is now white and that is why we can see the text and my subject is black and that is why we don't see the text over my subject so these are things that you can do um, with layer mask in case i want to move this text around now let's see what happens 
you can see that it's not conforming to the shape of my subject and that is because the text is linked to this layer mask that we defined and by moving it around you can see that the layer mask is moving as well but we don't want that we don't want it to move we want the layer mask to stay where it is and then simply move the text alone so what i'll do is just click on the chain icon and that is going to disappear and that means that now I can move the text around freely and it's just going to move independently and I can move this text anywhere I want and it's just going to be behind my subject so let's just say I want to put it here make it a little bigger still somewhere like that and hit the check mark and now we've been able to add text to our image and because it's also a layer you can play with the opacity you can play with the blending modes you know just figure out if there's something interesting that you find so you can see we've been able to quickly just add text and this is looking pretty pretty good all right now let's move on to adjustments you can pick and choose any adjustments and apply it onto your image i'm going to pick a few again just feel free to explore um so if you have my lats for example and you click on color lookup this is where you're going to be able to add my color gradient lats so let's just say fire gold you simply click on that and it's apply the lats real quick you can adjust the opacity you can play with the blend mode you can do all of that to the layer because it works just like a typical layer um let's delete that let's just say you want to create your own color grading so maybe you're going to go to something like color balance now this is where you're going to make your adjustments let's just say you want to add a bit of red to your midtones a bit of yellow to your midtones a bit of magenta to your midtones and when you go to the highlights maybe you just want to cool it down add a bit of red actually cyan and a bit of green then you go into your shadows and you can also decide to maybe just add a bit of blue a bit of magenta and a little bit of cyan into your shadow so when you do it before and after this is the color grade and we've been able to quickly add to our image you can reduce the opacity so it's not too strong before after before after right in case i want to add a bit of brightness i can just simply click on brightness contrast and i can just add a bit of brightening to the image same thing with um, curves i can decide to just add a bit of contrast right here is adding an S curve it's just going to boost the contrast and also with curves you can create color grading using curves so let me just delete or let me just hide these for example and now that we added this little boosting contrast when I go into red channel I can decide to add more red or add more cyan if I go into the green I can decide to add more green or add more magenta I can also decide to go into blue add more blue add more yellow so this is what you can do with the curves is a very very powerful tool it's up to you to explore you know the way it works inside photoshop and you will be able to you know, just create multiple looks inside photoshop so i hope i have covered um quite a number of things inside photoshop i didn't want this video to be long but it's ended up being lengthy and that's because i wanted to cover so many things inside photoshop real quick but this is a quick overview of photoshop let me know if it's beneficial let me know if you learned a thing or two if you did leave a like leave a comment as well if you have any further questions leave them in the comment box i'll be sure to answer them i'll catch you guys in the next video and remember don't ever give up mm -hmm.